Being multidisciplinary. That's a, uh, that, that, I didn't even know that was the word. I had to, I had to look it up. Multidisciplinary. It's one word. There's no hyphen. It's, that's the word. And, uh, according to dictionaries. So, I realized yesterday, I was, uh, not yesterday, yesterday was Sunday, Saturday when I was talking about uh, Jared Leto in the breakdown, I was talking about being multidisciplinary and afterwards I thought, well, I was kind of hard on myself and I was kind of, I was kind of uh, complaining about it, like it was this horrible thing to have all these uh, different things that I like to do and that I'm good at um, and, and, and that's not really the... Uh, <laughs> that wasn't the message that I really wanted to get across about being multidisciplinary. And then there were some other conversations going on within the group uh, here and there in different posts and comments about being multidisciplinary. And I just wanted to, I thought, let me do a whole live on that. Because I, while it is something that you could complain about, right? It could be like, oh, I want to work on this project, but... I'm halfway through it and then I get, I want to work on this project. And then, you know, sometimes I feel like I've got 10 things going on and none of them are actually finishing. And, and it, it can be overwhelming, I suppose, sometimes to be uh, multi-talented. And I think as artists, many of us are, even if, even if you're only a painter, there's probably a lot of things you can do within painting, right? But for many of us, it's like, well, I'm really good at this and I'm really good at that. And then there's this other thing I'm really good at. And uh, I'm glad that I did this today because a few of you uh, commented on the original post this morning and, and had some good ideas as to why being multidisciplinary was a good idea and I a good thing. And I have one too. So I've got three reasons why being multidisciplinary is awesome, right? So the first one, uh, Danielle commented uh, earlier today about how it was a progressive thing for her in life. Like uh, as a kid, she was very shy and uh, very withdrawn and had a lot of anxiety and art in general helped her to uh, be calm and to sort of interact with other people. And I'm, I'm paraphrasing and probably getting some of this wrong and I apologize for that. But um, the, the crux of it was that one art modality led to another for her and to and then and then finally by the time she was in high school she was able to enter into dance and theater and it was something that she loved to do but would have never gotten there if it weren't for the other creative fields that she was already practiced in and and i feel like this is this is one thing about it is like one creative field leads to another and it's like if you're good at one you can probably branch out into others if you wanted to and and i found that really really interesting um, and Amy had one that I thought was really cool. This definitely applies to me is she said, I am never bored. And that is true for me. Like I hear people like you talk to a friend or something and they're like, hey, what's going on? They're like, oh, nothing, I'm bored. I have no idea what that means. I don't know what being bored feels like or looks like or anything because my brain is always right I've always got this song in my head I've got this idea for a video I've got uh, this business idea that I want to do and next thing you know I'm just running around like a chicken with that head constantly and that was the part of being multidisciplinary that I felt was overwhelming was I've got too much in my head that being bored is not even an option for for me and probably not for many of us it's because we have an outlet i think is is what it is right it's some people like they want to express something and they don't know how and they're just kind of receivers you know and i think that we are outputters as artists and 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 I don't know to me that's just so amazing and uh, it, there's always something creative there's always something to be working on the wheels are always turning and so Amy thank you for that one right and then for me uh, this was the big thing about being multidisciplinary is that I feel extremely self-sufficient uh, I'm also very technical here's a little background about me I I, I went to I was an art kid my entire life. I was always like the, the kid who could draw the best in school, right? Uh, until fifth grade when this kid Danny moved to the school and then everyone's like, he can draw better than you, Bobby. And I wanted to hurt him and I didn't like that, <laughs> right? Uh, but then we became friends and we were both good artists. But uh, then in high school, I was always like the art kid and uh, there were a lot of art kids in high school, but yeah, I was always known for that. But for some reason, I went to engineering school for college and uh i'll tell you the reason i my my dad was a pilot when i was a kid we used to go in airplanes all the time i loved drawing airplanes i probably have drawn 10 million airplanes as a kid in my life 
And, uh, and then I wanted to become an aerospace engineer because I wanted to draw airplanes for a living. And uh, I thought that would be amazing. And then I went to uh, aerospace engineering school and realized you don't draw airplanes. You design the lug nut that holds the landing gear to the wing. And it was really, it was more math than anything. Um, but the thing about me is I'm one of those right brain, left brain people. Like I'm really creative, but I'm also very analytical and sciencey and I'm into physics and I'm into uh, um, engineering was actually kind of cool and I was always good at math. So it kind of made sense for me until I got to my senior year and decided I hate engineering and I switched and went to graphic design school. Um, but I've always been self-sufficient and I've always been able to sort of pick up a new skill. So when I left design school, uh, I, I learned how to be a web designer after that. And uh, I just taught myself, you know, and when I wanted to start making videos, we, uh, my wife and I had our kids. And when my first, uh, my first child, my daughter was turning one, I had been taking all this home footage of her and I decided to make a movie out of it. I had never edited a video before, and so I just learned how to do it. You know, how hard could it be? So I, but that's me. I'm just, it's like, it, it, there are so many aspects to the things that I do in my business, the things that I do in my art, that if there's something I don't know how to do, I just go, eh, I'll figure it out, and I learn it. And next thing you know, I'm a video editor, or I'm a motion graphics creator, or an audio producer, or I, I record and produce and edit my own songs now you know i don't go in a studio and have somebody do it for me i perform it and i edit it and i produce it and i put it out there so as a multidisciplinary artist there's so many things that we can do that that cover all the stages or at least most of the stages of the things that we want to create and i think that that's really truly a gift uh so you know if you're not sorry to rub it in but if you are then you know Good for us. Uh, so anyway, that's that's that for my spiel. I'm gonna go to the comments now uh, and uh, and see what you're up to. So I'm gonna say hi to everybody now. Hello. Let's see. Wow, lots of comments. Uh, Ty said hello. I said that. Uh, Amy said hello. I said that. And Stephanie is here live. Woohoo! Hello. Uh, Blake is here on my laptop. Not sure you can see the comments because of eCam. Nope. You're on. You're good. Hello, Blake. Uh, you are a Renaissance man. Thank you. Appreciate that. I'm going to slow down a minute. I feel like I'm out of breath from all that. Uh, I also get very excited about it. In case you didn't notice, it's, I, I don't talk fast because I'm nervous on the daily lives. I talk fast because, man, do I enjoy this. This is like, I'm like a kid right now. So this is, and then, for you know, and, and I'm out of breath. Um, Amy, making a to-do list helps a little. Oh, that's, yeah, that's, let's talk about that one quick second, right? Uh, I, 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 Show of hands, who who uses like apps and things like that for, for to-do lists and things? Because I, I don't, don't raise your hand, I can't see. Um, I, I have everything on paper because I'll always be like, I'm going to use one of these apps to, uh, I sound like an old person. I'm going to use one of the apps to... Always mute your phone before you go live. Uh, I'm going to use one of these apps to like do my schedule and everything like that. And before you know it, it's like taking me an hour to plug everything in. And then I never look at it again. And I'm like, why did I do that? It's so much easier to just write it on paper. But yeah, lists are, are good um, to a point because, uh, you know, this is a whole nother live. Because then I get this feeling sometimes where it's like, I want to work on this project and here's what I got to do. I want to work on this project and here's what I got to do. Except then... I don't feel like that. So it's like, at what point do we as artists wait for inspiration to work on a thing? And at what point do we kind of push ourselves to get inspired in the doing? That's, that's gotta be a whole nother live. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I gotta write that down. Okay, uh, but yeah, lists, good Amy, thank you. Ty says it's hard to stay on one thing when you can do many things. Yeah, it is, right? Your, your brain is just, you wanna do so many things. Uh, Blake says, people are always telling me that I'm too busy. Maybe they aren't busy enough. Maybe, right? Sometimes to me, it's like, I like being busy. I like having a lot to do. And when people tell me they're bored, I don't understand it. Um, so I'm never bored, says Ty. Oh uh, yeah, I don't think any of us are. On, on oh my days when hyperactive artistically, oh, my days, yes, hyperactive artistically. I know what you mean. I'm trying to figure out the grammar there. But yeah, uh, hyperactive too, right? Um, 
I try not to be hyperactive. I'm not this uh, all day long, and I'm usually really, really mellow. These lives get me pumped. But, um, but yeah, I, I know exactly what you mean there, Amy. Blake says, outlets are a good thing. Yes. Yeah, I, I remember saying that. Yes. Um, Ty says, do you have videos available for smoother editing in Premiere Pro? Uh, I don't. I don't really do tutorial videos on how to do stuff. I'm more of a ethereal like inspirational kind of video person uh, I'm not I'm not really the how-to technical kind of guy um, however there are some uh, really good YouTube I can't think of the name I think there's one called uh, premiere gal or premiere girl I think it's gal uh, on on uh, on YouTube that I like she's really good and also um, Peter McKinnon has some great, great, great tutorials for uh, Premiere and After Effects. So if you want, if you want some good stuff, uh, go check out his channel or Premiere, either girl or gal. I think it's gal. Uh, Amy says paper and pen. Yeah, totally paper and pen. Yep. Uh, Blake, I write lists manually. Yeah, you know, I think so. I just downloaded an app for organization. Pretty good so far. Okay, cool. And Amy, a list doesn't have to be done in order. No, well, it doesn't. It's more of like a reminder thing. And Dan, hey, Dan's here. What's up, buddy? Uh, it's fascinating when you can combine your multidisciplines into one, into something new. However, I find that sometimes the audience can find it difficult to understand something new at first. So you need to keep on going to explain the concept until it clicks. You know, that's, that's a really interesting point because that's one of the things I'm trying to do is... Um, combine everything that I like to do. I, 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 li I have my music. I love running a group like this and doing the uh, inspirational and educational videos. Um, I want to take the concepts from these videos and turn them into more artistic film style type things. Uh, and, and I also have ideas for like an animated series and they don't all seem to go together. Um, but I figured the one group of people who would understand all of it would be artists, <laughs> you know, uh, that even if this, even if the music wasn't your thing, but you liked the inspirational videos or vice versa, or, uh, or people were just into the, um, what's it called? The, the animated stuff. Uh, the, the art, as artists, we can kind of find value in, in, in all art, even if it's not our favorite art, if that makes sense. Uh, Ty says, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. I don't know what I did. Uh, Kelly. Hey, Kelly's here. Hi, Kelly. Uh, do you ever get stuck making the list and then lose the desire to be creative because the logic or linear mind takes over? Oh, that's such a good question. Uh, like I get stuck in productive and lose the creation aspect. Ooh. Wow, the questions today are, are, are making me want to do entirely new lives. Yeah, that's a really, really good question, Kelly. Uh, do you ever get stuck making the live and then lose the desire because uh, the logic linear mind takes over? The answer is yes. Um, absolutely yes. I think lists help with this because you remember what you wanted to do. I get so many creative ideas sometimes that I forget them. I, I Oh, I lied. I have one app that I use for a lot of things. It's called Evernote. I keep it on my phone. And the reason I use Evernote and not paper and pen for this is because when I get an idea for a song, I'll be singing it and I'll always be somewhere where I can't like start, you know, working on it or anything like that. I'll be in the car. I'll be upstairs with the kids or something. And I'll go somewhere relatively quiet. And then on Evernote, I can just sing the melody that I've got in my head so that I remember it later. And I have melodies recorded that are a few years old that I finally get to. And I'm like, that's when the inspiration strikes to actually make a song out of it. Uh, and the, But the idea popped in my head uh, at like some arbitrary time. Uh, it's very strange, but that really wasn't your question. Uh, your question was like, you, you get this idea for a project and now you want to work on it. And then all of a sudden, um, your monkey brain kind of takes over. And it could just be that you're overwhelmed with all the parts Oh man, there's so much to do for this. Or it could be sometimes this is me is I, I'm I get overwhelmed with the who's gonna like this, 
and, and I'm learning not to care so much about that one anymore because I, I'm, I'm learning I have to like it. If I like it, then the people who will like it will come and see it and they'll sort themselves out. But when I start trying to figure out what to make based on what I think other people are going to like, I end up making nothing and I'm not happy and nobody sees anything and so they're not happy and there's this hair just like sticking weird right there. That's weird. Um, so yeah, uh, I, Kelly, I'm gonna I'm gonna come back to this question probably on another live too. I've got to come back. I got to come back to this one and and read these comments because you guys have have stirred up some ideas for future lives and, and I love that. That's my favorite thing. So guys, uh, that was the last comment. No, no new ones have come in. So Kelly, you get the booby prize today. That's nice unless somebody comes in and steals it from you. But uh, I'm just going to thank you for your time. This was a lot of fun. I really appreciate it. Uh, and I will see you tomorrow. Have a great day. Bye.